Welcome back to the channel. This video may well be a bit of a rant, so there'll be some strong opinions. And uh, if you're an Apple fanboy, you're more than welcome to uh, disagree in the comments. I look forward to hearing what you have to say. This video will be about my journey in purchasing and using the M3 Pro Max. I think I've got that right. Just to note, I am using my Comica XD Boom uh, for the first time without the lapel. So I um, was just curious to see how it would sound. So I'm hoping it won't be a surprise in the edits. I'm going to just do a quick condensed version. And if there's some interest to it, I will go into further detail later. Now, I've done benchmarks. I've done tests. I have looked at all the usual things. As an Apple user for many years, I have had a 15 inch model of a MacBook Pro. I also have iPads and iPhones. I'm sure like the rest of you watching here, I'm a PC user, generally speaking on a desktop where I work doing editing, 3D, motion graphics, animation. It does what it needs to do. Always could be better, but for the scalability and especially the price, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense buying a Mac because I always think you're gonna buy, pay twice as much. I wanted to be mobile. I discounted PCs because since the M1 came out, I thought it was pretty good and I hadn't seen PCs really generally work as good. So the first laptop I bought was the 16 inch M2 Pro Max. I was generally impressed. I loved the screen. It was big, but it was just heavy and a little bit larger than I would have liked, I think. Um, although I would have been happy to use it because I'm not massively mobile in jetting around, but still it felt like the power for the cost, even though it was refurbished, didn't really feel like it was that much moved on from the M1. With my tests, one of the first things that I found is that although it geek benched pretty high, pretty decently, compared to my PC, when I did a Cinebench test, I found that it pretty much did the same, maybe fractionally better than my desktop, which in of itself would be, you know, impressive, except for the fact that the PC is about two or three years old now. So I think if you buy a laptop three years later, it probably makes sense that it's gonna be a little bit faster. And in this case, are roughly about the same which was a bit of a disappointment in the fact that if you're getting a geek bench which is twice as fast and saying that the 3d aspects and you know the what your computer can do is twice as fast but then when you actually you know um cine bench it which is you know cinema 4d equivalent tests on both that it's not really coming up as fast now that could be the fact that the software isn't working with the mac as well as the mac is able to perform so I think that's often one of the big issues or problems that I have with Apple and buying their technology. The benchmarks are super high, super good, and you know, that's fantastic. But in a real world application, it's not, it's not being used as well as your actual machine is able to perform. So that is, that was a bit of a downer and I thought, well, okay, it's um it's okay it's okay but is it worth the almost three just over three thousand or just under three thousand that the computer um, is valued at but in the end i got massive cold feet because i had an incident with apple at one of their stores with uh, an ipad device which the battery was dying so one of the massive problems that i've had with apple is often my experience of their customer service and their process now with this iPad, that was working perfectly fine until the battery, after an update, no less, started to just lose its charge. It had gotten to the stage where the Apple couldn't power up. And because it couldn't power up, they then couldn't say, oh, it's, it's, it's a battery issue, even though that is what they thought. They wanted to charge me in excess of 300 pounds to change the battery, but there wasn't just change the battery. They were going to change the whole thing because they had to change. They said, it's, oh, it's a, it's a whole piece and they have to change the whole thing, which just made me wonder about all their virtue signaling that they do, you know, 24 seven about how green they are and about their processes. And when in actual fact, if they're going to replace a battery, they're not just going to do that. They're going to replace all the components of a laptop just to fix an issue that is known to be a battery. In the end, I managed to get the battery replaced for around 50 pounds with eye smash. So, you know, kudos to them for having a company that actually just will replace the component part rather than having to replace the whole thing. And surely that's gonna be better for, you know, all the, you know, cobalt digging up that they might well be doing 
just to replace components. So what's that got to do with a laptop, you may say? Well, I just didn't want to then imagine having an issue with a laptop and then having to throw away the whole thing and just to resolve maybe a problem if it comes up and if that's the way their customer service was going to be you know or oh, one little problem and oh by the way you need to pay to replace the whole thing and yes you can have apple care plus or whatever it may well be but again you have to factor that in the cost so for whatever the cost is for a mac that is not the real cost you almost have to factor in buying the apple care otherwise you will have to buy the whole laptop again because nothing can be repaired or replaced on it it has to be it literally has to be you know thrown in the bin and you know at the cost of another 10 you know campaigns at how green they are it just seemed like a whole fruitless endeavor and then something happened that i didn't expect the m3 was launched and lo and behold i decided to get the uh, m3 pro max the base level m3 pro max when i was doing the tests on the m3 and i'll tell you about the m2s as well Basically, the whole scrub issue is a mass is a is a massive uh, pet peeve of mine because pick your biggest YouTuber who does you know all the techie type of tests on Apple products or laptops, for example, and almost none of them do what I consider or call a scrub test um, to see how responsive it is when you're working, and even when they do something similar, it's like they've got a one you know one time like with maybe two or three videos or. You know, occasionally you might see a multicam, but even at that, I'm not seeing, you know, eight cameras and motion graphics in there and everything compiled. It just, it just doesn't happen. So that's normally very disappointing. So what I wanted to see is when I have a project fully loaded, what is it like when I hit the space bar, when I hit play, what's it like in Premiere, in Resolve, in After Effects? And that effectively is what I wanted to test and see. And the M3, it had that nippiness. It definitely, when you hit that space bar with the motion graphics, I felt like it was a bit better. It definitely felt faster than the PC. And the M2, it was okay. I did, I just didn't feel it had that much of a bump of what I was expecting, although it was still good and usable. But the M3, it, I was a lot happier with it. And for editing, I thought it was good, although I still had a few moments where I thought, what's it doing? It was doing some strange things of slowing down. And again, I don't know whether that was an update. This may be a good moment to point out that Adobe Playback in Premiere has been very poor. So much so that I had to contact Adobe themselves to A, notify them if they're not already aware, but to help them solve the issue. I'm not sure if it's every codec or just certain codecs at the moment, but the difference between uh, Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve is like night and day. Resolve can be playing back five to seven plus clips on the timeline at the same time with no visible slowdown. Whereas in Premiere, once you hit two clips playing back at the same time, it struggles. Three to four, it's definitely glitchy. So it, and I've, I've tested it between Mac and PC, so it's not an OS issue. It's not a driver issue. It definitely is a Adobe Premiere Pro issue. For the purposes of the tests, the Mac definitely was performing better than the PC, about maybe 50% better. That's still something and it's good to get a baseline between the two. But in terms of professional playback and working, that's only found in Resolve on Premiere. It's it's good, it's fine, it's usable for, for most cases, but in terms of what you're paying for and what you're getting, Adobe is, seems to be limiting things and it's not always been this way. It might only be this 2024 version because I don't remember it being like that before. It could be a temporary issue, but one to be aware of and Adobe, if you're watching, please sort it out. It's surreal. It's a fake. It's surreal. I started getting second thoughts pretty quickly again over this laptop. When you do a 3D benchmark, and or you know a straight operational in Premiere or After Effects, it's operating like a three-year-old desktop, which some might say that's still pretty good. But the whole you know scary fast nature of how you know good the M3 silicons are supposed to be, I kind of think that the technology is working better for benchmarks and it's designed well for benchmarks. But in reality, it performs good, but not as crazy good as maybe the benchmarks may suggest. So definitely bear that in mind if you're coming from, well, just buying any of their products, because I think they are capable, massively brilliantly devices and machines, 
but the software, so you could say this has nothing to do with Apple, this is to do with Cinebench, this is to do with Adobe, you know, After Effects and Premiere, or, or, or Resolve, for example, so there is a case for that, so I do want to be fair to say maybe they're too fast for their own good, too, you know, too ahead of their time with, the, with their technologies, but it still comes down to the fact that when you hit play, when you're in After Effects and you're scrubbing, which is where I live 99% of my time when I'm working, I want it to work well, to work fast and be responsive. So does it do that? Was it doing that? I decided to have another look at what the nearest PC competitor would be. And in my mind, that was Dell and Razer. And again, after a lot of research and looking, I thought that the 14 inch Razer, it seemed to be that that was the next best machine for a, four, a 14 inch size. So lo and behold, here I am three computers later. So in short, if you, if you do editing, After Effects, 3D, don't buy a Razer 14 inch. Uh, it, it, it's, it didn't, it didn't work. It really didn't. It's like, it was, yeah. Looking at the benchmarks of the CPU alone, I thought, okay, maybe it's not, definitely not going to be as fast. So since the M2, M3s are highly capable, but in reality working at a slightly lower spec to when in, you know, After Effects and Premiere, maybe the Razer with the Ryzen chip uh, might well work better, or at least at 100% of what it says it's going to do. So in short, instead of having a machine that, you know, has a massive, usage case of what you can do but then when you're using it it might perform here because of the software if you bias a machine that you know is gonna is only at 100 percent here but then can definitely use all of that 100 i'm thinking okay well maybe that's worth a worth a punt but it didn't work out that way because in actual fact the razor needed to be plugged on and you needed to have you know a jet engine uh sound coming out of it to, to perform maybe at 70 percent of what you would expect the benchmark which it's showing to perform at and and the scrub test it absolutely failed on it's like you'd move something you'd wait like a second it would think about it it might play it may go for a bit it then every time you went to a new clip it would stutter and when i edit often it's it's fast edits it's quick edits it's sometimes there's a lot of energy and if you're cutting quickly and every time it gets to a new piece in a new section or a new clip it's having to think about it or you know hunt and again whether that's using the speed from external drives possibly but i use the same external drives to test on each of the machines and on the m3 after looking at that it was like day and night i could put it in there and occasionally it might slow down still and clog up and a bit of a reboot was needed but on the whole at that point i, I realized the m3 was the winner and it will do better than any of the other pcs that i could see and te had tested one good thing with the razor it felt like a mac the build quality and nature of it is perfect so if they manage to sort out the fans the power it would be really good the touchpad was the best pc touchpad that i've ever used but it's still not as good as the mac and if they were to sort out like i said just sort out that power and the actual speed um and the energy efficiency that the mac had um i think they may well turn a page but for the moment i still i stand by what i realized before i even bought it that there is no better laptop than a mac laptop at the moment at least in the 14 inch um, size world of things because i've seen a lot of you know massive 16 inch pcs that i think might be able to perform as good but again they're going to be heavier they're going to be louder they're going to you know be hotter and you know it's just gonna, there's going to be a lot more things that you have to compromise on to gain the speed that the max do except for one thing this and this isn't really a down vote for the Max. It's more of a down vote maybe for Maxon in terms of the software and the interoperability. But I'd also say it's a bit of a downer because the latest OS on the Max means it, I don't think it has Rosetta in the same way, or at least the way it works with Cinema 4D. And uh, I think most of the other Maxon products, I think within After Effects, you can run it in a, in a way that some of the older products, like some of the plugins work. But I use Optane, and Optane, which is a renderer within Cinema 4D, it, it doesn't work 
the infrastructure of the architecture of the GPU won't allow you to work on that, which is an utter shame because it means I can still do a fair amount of 3D and I still want to test that further. That was the last thing in the tail from Apple perhaps, but I think in the areas of editing, definitely King and within After Effects, it does work okay. I think it still struggles a little bit, again, because of the size and it's a laptop, but I think that's more of a laptop thing and you can get work done definitely and I don't think there was a massive slowdown in speed now between the desktop and laptop so that was fantastic. So that's it basically. You'd think getting a laptop would be a simple process but for those who use it for work and for those who have high expectations and a high use case it definitely is quite tricky to balance the portability and the power. I forgot to say one major issue why, Apple, do you make your bevels to be so sharp? I, I swear one of these days I'm going to hear a story of someone who accidentally cut their wrists uh, on their machines because they are literally razor sharp. And I really wish that they were what, just like soft edge, do a bevel, you know. And even Razer have done that. And with their machine, their 14 inch had the same problem. They're trying to be a mini me Apple fanboy, and literally they've, they've copied their design to some degree. But the uh, maybe not copied illegal whatnot. We just like just smooth that thing off. I literally want to take a file out and file it down. So am I happy with this? At the moment, yes. I've traveled with it, I've used it, I've completed some projects, and it's good. Which I never thought I'd live to hear the day because I really dislike the experience. Well, I think this video has gone on far, far, far too long, but hopefully you've stuck with me. If that has helped anyone, I don't know, let me know in the comments. I think you're in pretty safe hands, except for the case of 3D, where that is outstanding. I'll have to see, or maybe move to something like Blender, see how Blender works, and because I think Octane in Blender works, it just doesn't in um, Cinema 4D, unless you have the latest and greatest software, which is really annoying, because it, it, Macs always force you to be on the latest and greatest, which again, you either gotta have a, you know, all the money in the world to keep on upgrading, and it's a philosophical thing of what is necessary in this world to have to do what you need. And I just don't buy into the, you know, the ethos of Apple, even though I think the ethos of Apple when it comes to pushing forward and advancing, they are doing pretty well at that at the moment. But they have ups and downs, you know, they took away the SD card and what was that about? And they gave it back. So I think if people stop being less fanboy and a bit more, a bit more critical for what's bad and obviously praise when there is good i think that's a kind of fairer place and that's where i am going to be on this so you may want to hit the down vote on this video but um either way whether you comment you like or you dislike uh please do get in contact engage in any way and i'll be happy to meet you and see you all in the comments so until the next one take care speak soon bye now